Hello again, friends. We are in rural Pennsylvania, just outside the town of Lampeter. And as you can see, this is the Shantz Graveyard, possibly the oldest burial ground in Lancaster County. It is also referred to as the Musser Cemetery, but I haven't figured out why as of yet. There's only one Musser buried here, little Ada Musser, who lived a single day in 1847, and she was buried well over a hundred years after Shantz was created. Her parents and siblings are all buried about three miles away in another Lancaster cemetery. We're going to try to visit that as well, and I'll put I'll I'll try and uh, stick either a photo or a little video clip of their uh, their graves in here as well once we see Ada. And I think that's that may be her right up in that corner up there. But we're going to take a walk through here and see what we see. So this cemetery is known to contain the graves of three of the earl area's earliest settlers. Wendell Bowman, Martin Malin, and Jacob Miller. Wendell lived nearby on 530 acres, and in 1712, he built a large two-story log cabin with a stone cellar. Uh, unfortunately, that was torn down in 1874. The location of his original headstone is unknown, and a newer one was placed in his and his wife Anna's memory. And that would be right here. This is obviously not from the 1700s. Martin Malin was a Mennonite who came over from Zurich, and he is credited with being the creator of the Pennsylvania Long Rifle, often mistakenly referred to as the Kentucky Long Rifle. Martin's gun shop, built in 1719, still stands on a road near here, and we will also be visiting there as well today and hopefully get a little, at least a photo, if not a little video clip of over there. Uh, he and his, uh, his wife is actually, his wife and his son are buried in here. We're gonna find them. I think that is them right there. His stone, I believe is lost, lost time. Yeah, and these are in German too, so I cannot read this. Maybe some of you can. But that would be Johann Malin, um, his son, I believe. And then this would be, I think that's Barbara Malin, his wife. There still remains some uh, historical confusion over whether Martin Sr. or Martin Jr. were the master gunsmith. Now, I'm not sure where Martin Jr. is, but I believe he is in here as well. Um, let's go down here. These are the oldest ones in the cemetery over in this corner. And even though Jacob Miller's gravestone has the oldest date of April 20th, 1739, it's still very readable, even though it's in German. His son Samuel in inherited a portion of this land that we're standing on, uh, including his burial ground, but he died in, in November 1739, just a few months after his father. After Samuel's death at 28 years of age, his widow married the local Mennonite bishop, Hans Schantz. And Bishop Schantz portioned out this graveyard for Lampeter Township in 1740. So that brings up the question that I have in my mind. This graveyard is called Schantz Graveyard 1733. That's what's on the sign. But yet it wasn't uh, given to Lampeter until 1740. It wasn't uh, officially made a a graveyard to that point so I although there were burials in here earlier I guess the 1733 probably is because of the earlier burials but this right here in front of us is Jacob Miller you notice the 174 that's a 2 even though it looks like a Z uh, this is all in German some form of it but right down here is the 1739 that is his death date right there and you can see that's completely readable. So if you can read German, um, that's uh, that's for you right there. What do we have here? This also, uh, you know, what? this might be, I don't know if this is Jacob Miller's wife. I don't know. 
This also has a 1739 down there in the lower right corner. Put that right in the center of the screen for you right there. So these are these are the oldest ones here in this corner. These are all German. Now back in here, we have these are written in, in English. Samuel Maori. Looks like Catherine and Daniel Maori or Howery, H-O-W-E-R-Y. That's interesting. E-R-Y, and over here we just have H-O-W-R-Y. So different spellings, same name. Some very old iron there. As we noticed here, some brand new bolts someone put in there to hold it together. So thank you to whoever did that. Many of the stones here are illegible today. We're going to walk down the rows of the stones there. It is believed that at least a few predate Mr. Miller's 1739 stone. So we know that there were burials here earlier than that, but some, many of the stones have just been lost. Shantz hold a couple examples of black slate headstones as well, and they're down, they're down further that direction. We're going to see them shortly. Black slate is not as vulnerable as other typical stone used in grave, graveyards uh, to the elements. It's not as vulnerable to rain and snow and wind and stuff, so it holds the inscriptions much better for several hundred years beyond. So John and Esther Whitmer both died in 1828, two weeks apart. Uh, and at nearly 200 years old, their stones are very legible to this day. So we'll see them in just a couple of minutes. We're going to walk through here and check out what's up here. This this is a, a, a neat little corner lot here. I'm going to guesstimate just maybe a little less than an acre. I'm not sure quite how big an acre is. But... So some of these are readable. We've got a Marianne, wife of David Mintel. Mintel? I can't tell that. Uh, memory of George, son of. This one is a little blurry here. Maybe David Franklin, son of Minnick. M-I-N-N-I-C-H is what that last name looks like to me. Ah, here's David Minnick, and there's Anna right beside him, his wife. Now, oddly enough, not all of them are facing the same way. They kind of flip back and forth. So these are facing this direction. We have Daniel Kep Keppertz, his wife Veronica right there, wife of Daniel Keppertz. Again, some of these are so blurred out that they're very, very hard to pick up to read. I believe this row is facing this direction as well. Yep. That is a that looks like a Jacob Kennig. Kennick, Kennig, I'm not sure if that's a C or a G. I'd have to look that up and find the grave. And there is Anne Ken Kendick. Kendig or Kendick, one or the other. Let's go up here and see Ada Musser. This is the baby that lived for one single day in 1847. She was buried here. Her parents are about three miles away. And that does say Ada, A-D-A-M-U-S-S-E-R, Musser. All right, we found Ada Musser's family right there. Out on the left, that's Dad Henry Musser. Then we have Lizzie Musser, the wife. I believe both of these are for Charlie, the uh, eight-year-old boy who died. I don't remember what he died of, but that's that's Ada Musser's family right there. She, of course, is buried in the Sean's graveyard that we just visited a few minutes ago. She lived for one single day. 
And for whatever reason, the cemetery bears her last name, even though she was not one of the founding people in it. Um, so I'm, I, I'm curious to know if one of you knows out there and can put in the comments as to why they would have added call, to call this Musser Burial Ground in addition to Shantz. I'd be interested to know that because I couldn't find anything online. These are John and Esther Whitmer. These are beautiful examples of black slate. Now, unfortunately, hers has been broken off in a couple of places, but the, the uh, inscription is right there. In memory of Esther Whitmer, died October 7, 1828, aged 59 years, 8 months, 22 days. And in memory of John Whitmer, died September 22, 1828, aged 74 years, 7 months. So they literally died three weeks apart in 1828, nearly 200 years ago. But those inscriptions are just sharp as can be. Very nice. In memory of Anne Mar Maria. No, Anne Maria, daughter of Henry and Orphany on Oh, I can't read that first name. Maybe you can see that on video. Miller, who departed this life September the 2nd, 1817, I think it is, aged one year, five months, 15 days. Just a baby. This is uh, this is the Shantz graveyard. See the beautiful pastoral setting here. Nice big Amish farm out there. Several of them out there in the distance you can see. It's kind of all the way around. And they give you a nice little little parking area there for big enough for one car. And so, beautiful setting. Beautiful place here in Pennsylvania. If you get a chance to come see it, please do. But as always, be respectful of it and uh, of the folks that live around here. So thank you for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and we'll see you in the next video.